ago at a wedding and on a farm. And we were like, I wonder if it's true. And we walked over the barbed wire fence where the cattle were in the far field. And we started playing, guess what? Engelberg or Edmund just pulled it out. Guess what happened? First one, the baby cows. Ears went up and they started coming. Then the moms came. And everybody got to within six feet of us because we just kept playing. Then the bull came over, scared everybody away, and we left too. <laughs> that is a true story. It, um, it was amazing. It was just one of those things. You get shelf corn, you get to a farm, just try it. You get the baby cow first, you'll see the ears prick up and start moving. And then they're going to be, where is that? They'll start coming, and then the moms will start doing it, and it just goes from there. And we got, I think about 75 head of cattle started coming at us as we were playing. That's two weeks ago at a wedding. So try it. You can find it. All the stuff is up there on YouTube. And it's a great resource to find things. All right. How are they made? I'm going to pull one more down for a second. That's useful. The horns themselves are all one piece of wood. They start as a tree on the mountain. The root ball is down here where my foot is. As you know, it's steep. So the root balls are here and the tree grows up. The craftsman will go out there, find trees and lights, and he will cut them off the little root ball and bring them down to his, his workshop. At that time, it is one long tree. He will then split it, cut off as far as he wants to make the belt, he will cut it in half, and then he will by hand start carving out the inside. Once he has that done, then he will put them together and he'll start working on the outside. It takes a long time. The tolerances that these craftsmen work on are tiny. These are hollow. The whole way through. It's there. It started out as one tree limb. It's hollow now. The tolerances are in the millimeters. It so brings it from larger to smaller the whole way down. To make sure it stays that way so when they go together at the butt joints of the wood, they exactly match up. There's no ridge. And they usually put them into three or four pieces. They're mostly made out of um, you know, alpine spruce, alpine poplar, alpine pine. But for decoration, some craftsmen will wrap in pine. You'll see some ones don't have any wrapping on There's no real reason to have it other than decoration. And it helps you hold on to it, especially if it's wet outside. Bavarian horns typically don't have the rattan wrapping. But the French, the, uh, the French Austrian, and the uh, Swiss horns, for the most part, do. The next thing they'll do when they make them is they'll, they'll customize it. The owner will ask for something to be painted on it that represents their family, where they're from. They'll get them painted, they'll get it all set up, and then we'll lock them down. They'll make it into a permanent hue and permanent color. So the horns are, for the most part, handmade, which is why it takes a Oh, one last thing. The butt joints, they do these in either brass or a type of steel, whatever it is. And it's just for easy use. You can get some that are wood on wood, but the metal pieces. You can just use glue on these, and they'll go right together, and they'll stay together. It's also easier, a lot easier, to uh, transport these when they're broken down to pieces. We've got a gentleman in the club, his horn is 12 and a half feet, and it's only two pieces. So he travels and has to go on the top of the car. <laughs> Ours will break down into either three or four pieces. Now, what's the other difference? Yeah, this question. The yeah. couplers, No, the, the couplers themselves are outside of the inner tube. So when these go together, you can see on the butt joint, you see the wood inside? It lines up exactly with the wood on this inside. So the metal is not exposed to the air. It's exposed to the, the sound between the two.
let's see. Last thing, uh, I was about to say something I forgot. It'll come to me and I'll bring it back. Any, any other questions so far? All right. All right, you want an Alcorn. I know some people have already come up to me. They were like, do I buy them? Do I make them? You can do either. <clears throat> I mean, if you're a craftsman and you want to spend the time, by all means. The only thing you need to do is make it a proper length. And I'll talk about what the length means. And make sure you have the tolerances that as the horn gets larger, you still have where the wood seams are together. And the, as the dynamic gets larger, excuse me, as the horn gets larger on the inside, <clears throat> it has to remain a constant growth rate until you get down to the bell. Otherwise, it, you know, it screws up the sound coming through the horn. The artisans who make this over in Europe are true craftsmen. And you can watch some of their stuff on YouTube. And I, it's amazing how they do it and what they do. But they also will do a couple of things. Well, first let me talk about the artisans, and then I'm going to show you something. The three main ones that I talk about, um, and I own two out of, two out of these, um, Poe. Probably, and this is my thing, the preeminent, one of the preeminent makers in the world. His horns are amazing. They play very easy, and the sound that comes out of them is very tonally sweet. And I can play the same note on different horns, and you can tell which horn is which. You can tell the name. Um, and I've got a Poe horn. It's too good. It'll look the same. If everybody wants to come up later and try or whatever you see. These ones are probably the preeminent horn. This is the one that we, those of us that have bow arms, we are playing in a something where we want the sound to be just perfect. This is the default horn to do it. You can get them from him. He only takes online orders via email and only if they're in French. Flat out. We've had people communicate to him in German, Bavarian, English. He does not respond. But if you speak to him in French or Swiss French, he'll talk to you. But if you do, don't tell him you're in a Bavarian club. <clears throat> it's just, he's a, he's an artisan. What can I say? <laughs> but he makes amazing horns. Uh, the next one is Stalker. Uh, they're probably one of the largest in the world for handcrafted horns. Uh, they also do machine crafting. You can get their website, you can order them. They make solid, solid horns. We've got some stockers here. And if you come up later, you tell this one weighs nothing. Stocker horn, it's got some heft to it. If it gets hit, you don't have to worry about it. If this gets hit, it's probably going to crack. But the difference in the tone is a sweeter tone and more of a huskier, uh, a meatier tone um, with, with less sort of uh, that sweetness to it. But they're still great ones. Um, they're also, stockers are uh, quite, a, quite a bit less expensive than the bows. Bows are, are up there. And then the last is <clears throat> one of the new ones that I've also bought a horn from. It's got Alcorn Center .edu .edu online. Uh, that is this one. Great manufacturer, online ordering, delivery. You can get anything you want from them too. For Stalker and Alpine Center.de, they'll also sell you piece parts. You just need a mouthpiece. You can order a mouthpiece. If you just want to change the key, I'm going to show you something. Set this down. The key is important. By key, I mean what key am I in? Key am I playing? Swap this one 
sharp, I can play an A440, A444. It's a way of changing, yes. How do you know which one you just put in? Um, Is it written on there somewhere? That's a great question. I don't speak French, so I wrote on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> when I got the horn the first time. I just took an ink pen and made a very light mark on the inside of the wood as the wood was pieced. Where now I can do it by sight. Obviously, I had the horn about 12 years ago. But when he, in originally, he had him just get tape on it, written in the Swiss French dialect that I even had somebody that speaks French there looking at it going, I don't know what that word is. Um, once I figured it out, I just, just wrote on the inside and didn't put an indent wood. Enough so I yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll close up. Yeah. My wife, before I gave her that, got me. How can I tell the key? Great question. That's where I was going next. <laughs> you can look up the key. saying, what's the most, most important decision when you're buying a horn? What key are you and the people you're going to play with? In because you can't play together if you're not in the same key. Um, you got your horn right here? I'm going to show you something real quick. One of my partners in crime here has her horn, and it's in the key of F. I'm not going to be in the key of F, but we're going to play the same note. I'm going to show you the difference, and I'm going to show you why. Then I'm going to have one of my other guys come up, who is in the same key with me, G. And I'll show you what happens. We're just going to get a C. We're going to show the difference. Also, take a look at the links. That statement right there, 
most important decision if you're going to get a horn. Now watch, I'm going to play the same note as Darren. We're in the same line. Um, when you come up with this horn, you're going to notice that someone stepped on it. This is a $10,000 horn. And 
I had a six-year-old step on it once by accident. We fixed it. Because you have to match the wood to keep the horn going. So we just found a little mixture. We got the same type of wood for the horn. Just sanded it with sandpaper. Very, very light sanding to get very, very thin particles of wood. High in wood glue, mix it together. And then fill the crack and hold it together. The wood, because it's the same type of wood, binds with glue and then binds with the hard. You fill any small gaps. But also, you can't tell there's a crack. You don't see that glue thing. Every horn that we've had to repair, we've used this mixture, and it's just a half and half, and it's been amazing. We've either mixed it with wood glue or epoxy, and it works like a champ. Uh, for large cracks, it might be good to go to a woodworker. Um, epoxy works better on the large ones. You can do what we call Frankenstein knitting. We had a guy who, his horn was also stepped on, so be careful where you lay it down for a show. He had a crack in the top of the bell. The woodworker put small holes into the bell, and then they ran a, uh, a lanyard, very, uh, very, very small leather lanyard, and made like a Frankenstein X stitch. Hold it together. This horn sounded fine. It seems odd you're putting holes in the bell, but that that X stitch according to woodworker was the best way to keep the bell in the same position to allow it to have the same sort of tone. So those are my tricks. If you've got something worse than that, I yeah, I would consult a woodworker or consult the people that manufacture the horn. They would probably know better than me. These are the tricks we've been using for years.
you don't do it, it's just kind of a bland, I'm playing notes, it, that, 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 I'm gonna put you to sleep. So pay attention to that. We're gonna demonstrate later, um, especially on end notes. Just, we call it, sometimes we call it a pow, sometimes, but it's you hit that and you go bang, and then you drop the volume down. And then you bring it back, especially if it's the last note. It's a bang, and you do that on the end, especially when you got multiple horns doing it, it just makes the sound grow. And we're going to demonstrate and show you that. Uh, articulation is important. Don't slur every note. It will sound bad. You have to learn how to, to tongue the note to hit it. Slurs are good, but you should be able to tongue every note when it shows that. And the better you do that, the better you sound. Our biggest trick when we play it, you will hear this tonight if you come to the Heimat Oven. Our club is going to open the Heimat Oven with an Alphorn. You'll hear a pyramid. Everybody thinks it's part of the song. It has nothing to do with the song. We go out to play a pyramid. I'll go da da da. And then each one of the people in the group will da da da. And it sounds like we're beginning the song. We're not. We're finding our first note. That's all we're doing. Don't tell me. <laughs> it saves you many times in a show because sometimes it's hard to hit that first note in an out part. And by doing this, you'll even see that the trick goes, you'll, you'll see me walk out or whoever's leading that song will go like this to remind everybody. Start with a pyramid. Make a triangle. And you'll hear da da da. And then you'll hear other notes bouncing around. And that's everybody finding the note. And then, then you can start. Everybody gets the note. And then we're going to demonstrate uh, stair steps. Why you, is it called a pyramid? Because we're going da 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 da, and other people are going da da, like the third and the fourth, they'll go da da da, they'll know they're on the same note as me, and hopefully playing in the same key. <laughs> and then they'll come down because they may be starting two notes lower. So it's da 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 da, da and you'll hear multiple people doing it. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, oh, come on. There. Uh, Scare step bending. It's great to come to the end of the song. Everybody hits the last note. Yeah, 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 we're done. You gotta end it on a high point. Best recommendation, you'll hear us tonight do it. When you get that last note, it's not everybody hit the last note yet. You go in the order of the pieces, first, second, third, fourth, how many horns you got. Whoever is playing first, lead, they hit the top note. You go da, 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 da. And then you got my partner here, Michael, on the bottom, who just, when he has the last note, you'll hear him go, Boom! At the end. It's a lot better than everybody just going, ta-da, we're done. Use the stair step. It's a great ending, especially when you got, we got a powerful bass player, and you get him just hitting that note on the bottom, and it'll just, it just resonates uh, across the board. Any questions so far before we jump into Engelberg? Nope, okay. All right, so what I'm going to show, the last slide of this is the actual music. Again, this is all up on the website, you can pull it down. I encourage every club, learn this song. It's the one we use as our basic song for any new album. So we've got Derek, who's on our group. He's now one of our albums, the first song in our album system. Because it has everything I just taught you, from dynamics, slurring versus tonguing, the pyramid, the stair steps, the whole thing. It also has some key features in it I'm going to talk about. Articulation and volume change, you're, you're going to hear us play it, and then I'm going to play it in a different key, and you're going to hear the difference. But you can take this song, and I'm going to move ahead and show you something. Everybody wants to hear an echo, right? Break the song. Don't play it straight through. If you're in a place where you can get an echo, and we play every year at a, a ski resort, and we know that when we go in this one place, we can play, and we can get two, three, four echoes. But if I'm playing, and I'm just playing, and I'm playing, you can't hear an echo, because we're just playing, aren't we? You're not going to hear anything but us play. Break the song. There's pauses in there where you take a breath. Stop. So, we'll do this, just with the first part. We'll take, we'll go, da, 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 da. And cut it short. And then you hear bing, bing, bing. Da, 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 da. Break the song. If you can get an echo in front of the people you're playing for, you just, you make their day. 
They go nuts. If you're in a hallway like this, or you're inside of a beer garden, you call my dad, I'll give you a cheat. Take somebody. Like I might take Derek, or, or I could take Andrew. I put him down the hallway. And I'll go da 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 da. And as soon as I hit that note, Andrew will play da 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 da. <laughs> Sometimes people think it's real. And then they gotta realize, wait a minute, we're inside of a building. <laughs> but that will work in shows too when you're inside. It just give that impression to people that they're up on the mountain. Why not? It's fun. Last thing that we're gonna play, you guys get your horns and um, go and go to F. Uh, you, or, sorry, you go to G and I'm gonna play F with you. Um, people are gonna run up, they're gonna wanna play your horn. I will let you all play the horn if you want to, but I'm gonna counsel you. One, they gotta be sober. I've seen people who are not sober get a hold of a horn and it scared me to death. I mean, they're wobbling. That. The other one, keep, if you're going to eat your mouthpieces, get a good mouthpiece yourself. Get a really cheap, crappy one and keep it in your bag. Keep it in your pocket. If somebody wants to play your horn, swap the mouthpiece. Obviously, wipe it off. I carry uh, a hallway, wipe it off. But keep your mouthpiece yourself. I got that five mouthpieces. They're all clean, so I can let four people play. Then bring me out the horns. But if you've ever heard, do that. Don't let people use the horn if they're drunk or not sober, I should say. And keep an extra mouthpiece around. Just in case, oh, there's somebody, and I'll tell you the best people to let try the horn. Kids. You get the best audience reaction out of them. And if the kid really loves it, you might connect something in that child for music. You might also connect something in the parents who want to join the group. Pay attention to kids. Get them to try it. Yeah, you can try it. Here we go. We have a grandson who is four. When he was three, he was playing with the birds. Yeah. We live four hours away, so he could play with the horn. And his mom got a funnel, 12 feet of so we have hose and all the way out. And I gave him a mouthpiece. That's all it takes. It's in our room. Yeah, it's here. <laughs> We've done, we do the same. When we run out of horns and we have new people that want to learn, we do the exact same thing. Bird, hose, funnel, and, and a mouthpiece on the end. 12 feet. 12 is at 12 feet. And it works. It doesn't sound like this, but. If you're the only one playing, you can have more fun. Alright. Alright, let's see what we're going to do. And then we're going to do this. We're going to do it. First stand straight, second stand over there, break, show everybody the echo. I do the echo. Then we'll end it. Then we'll do the same thing over here with a different horn. And I want you to hear the differences. All right, you can't grab your horn, fight. You ready? Do it. G. We're in G, and I'm going to switch to F. Or anybody else who wants to come over to F, and we'll play second here to show people the differences. And we're going to keep the distance. <laughs>
just listen to the stairs but this time do the but I used to know to do the blah blah. I want you to see the articulation. Da da and you do the same, just nail it. So the last last one I'll do da 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 and the stairs. <coughs> I want you to notice another thing, the difference in the horns. I have rattan. Mine was made by a Swiss French manufacturer. Yours is close Hunts. alpine Hunts. Yeah. and no rattan. So the artisan is more closer aligned to the Bavarian area on the farming. Whereas the rattan types are going to go to the Swiss, French, Austrian. So you're in the true form. <laughs> Alright, good.
I love my other horn. This one, to me, I can hear the difference when you play it, the sound. It's like a Stradivarius versus another violin. Question. If you have a horn and it's in a different key, like Get five notes, you were saying? You get anywhere from four to five notes in an octave. Okay, in an octave, but what part of the notes is that you are playing? Primarily, keep it straight here. C, E, G, D. Yeah, cool. I'm sorry to start at the bottom. C, E, G, Depends on which key you're in. Sometimes you can get an A, sometimes you don't. Um, and so the other key might not be A, but it might give you the F. What I figured out is 99% of the music is C, E, G, D. It's, it's only those four notes. So we can switch keys. We don't care what key unless we're playing with someone else or we want to play with an accompaniment. Like, um, We've talked about having the outboard play with the, um, either the band or with the quarter or a uh, organist or an artist in some upcoming galvanist. But to do that, we need to keep key. And so we're, Rick Michaels, myself, and some others, we're all talking about it. Maybe in the future we're going to do something together. Um, it'll all depend on what key is the music in, with the accordion, or the organ to play, what, we just have to make them all work. I do have music that it is accordion, or uh, it is organ and alcohol. And I have one that is alcohol and blast alcohol. Uh, so it changes that. I have a friend who is a beginner, and there's no music in the background whatsoever. I said that you're going to love this because you're not going to have to change because you're not going to have favorite positions. You're going to have to have a favorite position. So it's just like a honey start. Which, you know, for the tuba, it's kind of close to a tuba baritone. 
but I've become comfortable with three different types. Derek's got two different types. You've got a large one. That's why he can hit those low notes. This big one allows you to just get a lot of air, a lot of flow, and you can hit those bass level notes out of it.
first lucky contestant. <laughs> okay. So buzz your lips.
sit down. All right, you do this. You do this part. You do this part. <laughs> All right. Anything else for anybody? Otherwise, we're going to close up shop. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Anybody needs anything, get a hold of any of us in all Washingtonia. We've got um, eight horns playing. We've got six of them here. We'll be playing six at the Iron Mess tomorrow. Um, we will have, most of our horns are in G. We've got G and F, but the majority tomorrow are in G, so we're going to play in G tomorrow at the Iron Mess. We've got one song. Okay. Ours looks like that Hmm? Ours yeah. looks like that. You got F? Like that. Okay. We're, we're slowly converting our horns to F. So like many of us have the secondary piece to change to F. And then um, for those, we're getting pieces made to convert them. But again, it depends on who the manufacturer of the horn is and what we have to do. Our accordion god, best way to describe it, uh, he just switched and he got a um, button box. He got um, he a piece of A-flat. So it's like all the songs that I knew for um, two books, like, okay, we've got to relearn that. It'll be fine. Everything's good. Changing keys. Beautiful. Oh, okay. Fine. Okay. Got everything? Oh.